Je donne à présent la parole à Madame Leila Zeroghi. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, distinguished council members, uh, thank you for the opportunity to brief you on the situation in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and, the present, uh, and to present the various challenges that we are currently facing in the country in a context marked by political tensions and an upswing of violence in certain parts of the East amidst a fragile socio-economic situation. The COVID-19 pandemic has introduced an additional layer of complexity and concern to the existing issues that we face in the country. The government has understandably been focused these past several months on the immediate response of the, to the threat posed by the global pandemic. Assisted by MONUSCO, as outlined in the report of the Secretary General submitted to you, the DRC authorities have undertaken a variety of efforts to limit the spread of the virus and elevate the additional socio-economic burden placed on the population by the movement restrictions, border closures, and other measures taken to deal with the pandemic. This necessary work has nonetheless slowed the, the pace of the government program and reform agenda. Mr. Pres President, distinguished council members, with respect to the overall political situation, to date, the ruling coalition, composed of President Chesekedi Cap pour le changement cash and former President Kabila's Front Commun pour le Congo FCC, continue to hold together. I believe there has been an understanding on the part of the political leadership that maintaining this political coalition intact is a fundamental prerequisite to make progress on the wide array of governance, security, and socio-economic challenges that still stand in the way of the country's long-term stabilization. At the same time, there are indeed serious tensions within the coalition which is frequently unsettled by partisan maneuvering leading to an erosion of trust between its partners. Unfortunately, over the course of the past days, the coalition has been put to the test following the introduction of three bills by FCC parliamentarians, which are considered by both the Union pour la Démocratie et le Progrès Social, UPDS, and the opposition to undermine the separation of powers and weaken the independence of the judiciary. Yesterday, a large number of UDPS supporters breached the enclosure of the National Assembly and vandalized a number of private properties to demonstrate this development. These actions were broadly condemned, including by the president. Maintaining unpopular support for the cash FCC coalition and the overall political dispensation has also been challenged by the trial, conviction, and sentencing of the president's chief of staff, Vital Camere, and disagreement over the renewal of the electoral commission. I therefore spare no effort in the context of my good offices to remind interlocutors of the opportunity presented to them by the outcome of the 2018 electoral process and that the country's progress rests on the readiness of actors across the political spectrum to put aside partisanship in order to prevent a political crisis which could have major consequences on the stability of the country. 
Mr. President, distinguished council members, at the same time, many parts of Eastern DRC continue to be torn by violence as a result of the activities of armed group and inter-community conflict. This trend has been favored by the effects of the political turmoil and the pandemic, which impact on the government's ability to take structured and comprehensive measures against actors perpetrating violence against civilians. This situation in part of Italy, the situation in parts of Italy in particular, has gravely deteriorated over the past month. An intensification of attacks on civilian and security forces by assailants associated with the Lendu community has in turn triggered Hema and Alur youth to create self-defense groups sparking fears of a further ethnicization of the conflict. Equally, reports of incursion by elements of the South Sudan People's Defense Forces in Aru territory, northern Ituri, have led to additional protection of civilians' concerns and displacement of the local population. In North Kivu, there is concern over what appears to be the intention of the Allied Democratic Force, ADF, to regroup and intensify attacks, resulting in increased civilian casualties. On 22 June, as you are aware, a MONUSCO convoy was ambushed by presumed ADF elements close to Beni Town. While returning to base after reconstructing a damaged bridge. One Indonesian peacekeeper lost his life and one was injured in this tragic incident. This is a stark reminder of the ultimate sacrifice our peacekeepers are willing to pay to protect civilians and advance peace and stability in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. I would like to seize this opportunity to reiterate my condolences and that of the entire mission to the government of the Republic of Indonesia and the family of the deceased. In the O Plateau of South Kivu, ongoing intercommunity conflict further degenerated with the proliferation of, uh, proliferation, sorry, of uh, uh, militia amongst all communities. I condemn in the strongest terms attacks on displaced populations and the use of hate speech which incite further violence. Effort to de-solidarize communities from these militia and preventing external actors from supporting their agenda will be vital to address the escalation of tensions in the area. Finally, in Yunzu territory, Tanganyika province, over 100 civilians have been killed in intercommunity conflicts between Twa and Bantu over the course of the past months, and tensions remain high in neighboring areas. Mr. President, distinguished council members, to address these issues, MONUSCO continues to pursue a comprehensive approach which combines active troop deployment to host spots, areas, community engagement, the development of targeted protection strategies, and the provision of critical large-scale logistical support to FRDC operations. I would like to highlight and pay tribute to the soldiers of the FRDC and to the uniformed contingents of MONUSCO, who are performing in an extremely difficult and dangerous environment. The security forces of the DRC need our full support for the work that they do and are indeed in need of continued significant assistance to improve their logistical, training, and operational cap capabilities. 
Security sector reform, therefore, must continue to be a priority for the government and a vital area that the mission and the international community must support. It is important to note that notwithstanding the increased violence in several provinces, the mission continued to actively seize, seize opportunities to support the government in its local reconciliation effort. In southern Irumu territory, for instance, in Italy, the security situation has continued to improve since the signing of the peace agreement with the Force de Résistance Patriotique de Lituri, FLPI, laying the foundations to overcome a conflict which has lasted almost two decades. In view of the interlinked nature of political stabilization, security and socio-economic development, MONUSCO with the UN country team is placing a priority on implementing programs to support transition in areas moving toward a state of post-conflict. We are therefore looking to enhance cooperation with the World Bank, the Peace Building Fund and other partners to assist with economic development and social cohesion in the Kasais. I believe strongly that the implementation of such transition programming is a crucial element of ensuring an environment that permits the responsible and sustainable exit of the mission. I would also like to take the opportunity to underline the synergies that MONUSCO benefits from in the effort to improve the political climate in the broader Great Lake regions. In this regard, the mission works closely with the Office of the Special Envoy on a range of issues, including to promote non-military measures to resolve conflict in the region, the African Union and regional organizations also continue to play an essential role in promoting peace and development in the sub-region. The Southern African Development Community, for example, remains a key partner in this effort as demonstrated by its active role in helping resolve the recent border dispute between the DRC and Zambia. Mr. President, distinguished council members, as I have emphasized in my recent briefings, there remain an opportunity for long-term progress in the DRC, which can pave the way to a responsible and sustainable withdrawal of the mission in the coming years. While restrictions linked to COVID-19 and the increased violence in the East have hampered effort to hold a structured dialogue with the government as requested by this council, the mission pursues its internal planning and hopes to build on the constructive relationship to accelerate the development of a joint strategy as soon as the context becomes more conducive. In this sense, I ask this Council today for its continued support for MONUSCO's work and the United Nations country team, including to stop the spread of COVID-19 and respond to the multiplicity of humanitarian emergencies the population continue to face. Finally, I would like to express my appreciation to the troop contributing countries, which have demonstrated great flexibility in terms of the temporary halt on troop rotations that have been necessary to ensure that the mission itself does not become a vector for transmission of COVID. I also uh, 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 thank the mission's civilian staff who are carrying out indispensable work in this time of increased uncertainty and movement restrictions. Mr. President, distinguished council member, thank you very much for your attention.